today we're going to be talking about the big day of conception and also getting your first positive pregnancy test. Welcome to episode two of Dude Expecting. I'm Dr. Eric Schmidt. I'm a board certified OBGYN. And what I want to do is help guys become more informed and information more easily accessible so that we all can be better partners. And just to recap, in the last episode, we talked about preconception and what we can do before the pregnancy to better our chances. And in this episode, we're going to talk about the day of conception. Actually, we'll leave that to you guys, but also your first positive pregnancy test. In the previous episode, we talked about the fertility window and how important that is and how we can be proactive in determining when it is. And now it's time to use it. For a woman with a normal 28 day menstrual cycle, ovulation usually happens around day 14. A fun word for you, middle schmerz. Now, the sperm can survive in the woman for many days, but it does take approximately three to five days for it to get up into the uterus and to the fallopian tube where fertilization happens. Fertilization actually happens in, if we draw out a, fallop- a uterus and a fallopian tube, it actually happens in the, the most distal we call it or the furthest away in the fallopian tube and fertilization happens there and then that early fertilized ovum now becomes a zygote and becomes a blastocyst and all this time is traveling down the fallopian tube to go to implantation. Implantation will happen around six or seven days after ovulation if fertilization happens. And again, this is where you can be of support because during implantation there can be a little bit of bleeding. And so if a partner is talking about they had a little irregular bleeding in uh, early pregnancy, try to give a lot of reassurance that this can be a normal part of the implantation process, the growing of a normal pregnancy, is that bleeding can happen in about 20% of all normal early pregnancies. So now that implantation has happened, the early developing baby or the blastocyst is going to grow into what we call as a fetus and is going to start to give off the hormone called hcg which is called human gonad human chorionic gonadotropin trips me up sometimes too that's why we will refer to it as hcg from here on out and so this brings the question when does someone test for this hcg or the pregnancy hormone because you can test too early and that can become stressful. There are two ways to test for HCG in someone's body. This is either done via the urine, and that would be like a home pregnancy test, or it can be done in the blood too. The home pregnancy tests are very accurate, and so they claim about 99% accuracy, but that's only if done when there's sufficient HCG in the system because they have a lower limit of approximately 20 to 40 units or milliunits of the HCG in which it can detect. So if someone tests too early, say day 21 of the cycle, or even any time before day 28, uh, this can be a false negative test, which can lead to actually quite a bit of anxiety and maybe someone thinking they didn't become pregnant in that cycle. What does a positive pregnancy test look like? It may look at few different ways. Um, two lines is generally the, the well accepted. So there's a normal test line. If you get a second line, that's positive. There's also little smiley faces, plus signs, read your package and you'll find out what actual positive test means. Now the blood test is more accurate. It can detect lower levels of eight milliunits of HCG as low as potentially two or five milliunits. But the thing is not everyone wants to, to get poked for this. So if someone wants to see if they're pregnancy is developing normally early on, um, we can actually follow this blood hormone test because it actually gives us a number. And what we do expect is um, that number to go up by a certain amount in early pregnancy because we can't quite reassure ourselves that the pregnancy is normal because we can't see it on ultrasound yet. It's just too early. So what we're looking for is actually for that number, we call it doubling in 48 hours so two days we hope that it would double now we did lower that threshold a little bit because we want to make sure we're not um, misdiagnosing abnormal pregnancies if it doesn't quite go up by doubling and so for me i generally use uh, go up by 50 percent or so um, over those 48 hours all right so through this whole process what can us dudes do we're going to go over a few points number one pick up the pregnancy test Um, This is going to be in the same location as where you picked up the ovulation tests uh, we talked about. And so this can be done, you know, on Amazon or any of the online stores, but don't be afraid to pick these up for your partner. Point number two, be supportive as always, but especially in this point of uh, expecting time, because it can be quite stressful, not only in the preconception, but in this early pregnancy stages, because again, we don't have the availability 
to do an ultrasound yet because it's too early and to give that reassurance. And so be supportive, help your partner out in, in, in knowing what they need and the symptoms that are going to come up, which we'll talk about here in probably the next few episodes about the early pregnancy symptoms, but great time to really be there uh, for your partner. And if you haven't already, Last point, pick up the prenatal vitamins with the folic acid, at least 400 micrograms, so your partner can take that because this is when it's especially important to take that folic acid when the baby is developing. And that's another episode. We're gonna be back next time to talk about the early pregnancy symptoms and nausea and early pregnancy.